Hi guys, welcome back. So a lot of you have asked me about my table sled and um, how I made it. Well, basically, I did this one a little bit different and um, I'm gonna show you how you can do it with some MDF, okay? And basically with this saw, the saw blade comes up right through where this line is. I don't know if you can see the teeth coming through yet or not, but and it keeps coming up and it does um, about, I want to say about a quarter of an inch when it cuts wood, right? I put this little saw guard here so that when the blade comes up, I can keep my fingers over here and over here so that my fingers are nowhere near this blade. I do plan on putting a clear plexi piece across the top of it to also have an extra um, piece of safety since I'm not using the little guard that came with it. Okay, so the first thing I did is I got some MDF and um, you can use regular wood if you want, but it needs to be about an eighth of an inch. Anything more than an eighth of an inch, you're gonna start losing your saw blade thickness. And because it is a miniature crafting saw for hobbies like doll housing and, you know, little things, it doesn't cut very thick because it's only a three inch blade or a three and a half inch blade. So you need that. Then you need to get yourself some one, um, little one by, I guess they're one by two boards. And I cut three of them. On that one, I only had two and then a piece. And I marked my line here and here and then here. Basically what they are is so that I have my gluing lines. And the very first thing I want to do is I want to glue all of these down. Make sure your glue is spread out evenly because you really don't want it pushed out because then you're going to have to sand it. And you want to try and keep that surface as smooth as possible. Okay. put that on there and then you can clamp it okay once you have it clamped in place that needs to set up and dry all right and you want to repeat that process for over here but the only difference is is you're going to glue these two together so you know put some glue right down in the middle of these two I just blot my glue just kind of smear it out a little bit you can use your finger rather than doing that but this way I don't have to worry about getting it all over me okay so you want to clamp these two together so that they stay together Alright, so once the side has started to set up on the right side where it's a single board, you can remove your clamps. This here, you want to put some glue on it, and then you want to go ahead and glue it down and clamp it here at the same as we did on the right side. Okay, now when you're gluing this, you want to make sure that it's square in case your board is not. Because if your board is out of square, then your wood is going to be out of square with every piece that you cut. So make sure that you have it squared up when you're doing this. And then clamp it the other way. All right, now once it's all dry and it's on there. Double check to make sure everything is square. Just like that. Okay. 
okay now this is the end where you're gonna have your fingers you can put another piece on here if you like like I did the other one and if you want to do that that's fine you would just take an additional block of wood and you would glue it right here the next step after that's gonna be you need to cut strips of wood that is gonna slide nice and even in here okay and you need to push them to either the right side or the left side if they don't fit perfectly. And you don't want them to fit exact where it's too snug. So you want to leave yourself just a little bit of room so that you can slide it and it glides. Okay? But just make sure they are close to one side or the other side when you're doing it. Okay? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to put your sled on top and you have to square it up. Now push, you can't see this, but the wooden dowel in the back, I'm pushing even with the sled. So that way it's even all the way down. Okay, now hold that in place and you'll have to square it up again if it moves like it just did for me okay now they're even in the back let me redo this Now what I want to do is mark my boards, but I'm going to put that extra block on there. And since I'm making this sled bigger than the other sled, this block is it's going to be offset a little bit to the right because it's a scrap piece and I'm not going to cut another piece and waste it just so that it goes the whole width of it. So I'm going to put that there and I am going to mark it and then cut that off. All right, now we're gonna remove that and we're gonna make sure these don't have any like burrs on them. See how it's got that, like that little bit of burr? You wanna take your sandpaper and sand that off if there is any on there. Cause that'll mess up the whole gluing process with having it where it's even. Just make sure that's nice and flat. You don't want to have anything on that end. Everything needs to be flat because if it's not, it's going to stick out. Now that's done. And what you need to do is you need to take this and put some glue on it on each one just a thin little amount not too much This is basically just squishing it together to 
get that glue to blend in and then I can see where I've got too much and I can wipe it off before I put it on here and have it all over the place in the sled. Okay, so once that's done, open it back up, put them back in the hole, take your sled and line it up with the edge, making sure that it's even. That way you're squared up again. underneath make sure everything's lined up there and I'm just holding this right along with the metal and gliding it across because the metal is straight so if you make yours even with the metal going to end up being straight all the way down. Okay, now for my little piece of wood that I have here, let me pull you back some so you can see. All right, you are going to put a little bit of glue on here. Now I'm just sanding this because I'm not painting that one. to dust the entire room because I didn't hook up the vacuum for the noise. <laughs> We're going to put some glue right along here. And then we're going to glue this right here. Let it sit on the two pieces that we extended out. Just let it sit right there on that track and you can slide it forward a little bit if you want to until you get it clamped. But then you're going to clamp it. 
and then it's going to dry. All right, now you need to put something really, really heavy here. And actually, I'm going to rotate my clamp so that when I put something heavy there, it doesn't get in my way. All right, so that's all flush. That's even. Now you need something super heavy. All right, let it dry for about two hours so it's got a good cure to it. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to put the hole in it and how it actually works. Okay, so once all your clamps are on there, you should be able to glide this back and forth just like this really easy. If it doesn't go, then it's not lined up down here properly. And it shouldn't be like all over the place. Like you shouldn't be able to like do this with it or anything like that. It should be just like that. Now, again, I made this one bigger than I did the previous one because I wanted to have extra pieces here. Like here's my previous one. And then the one that they actually sell for this saw, I ordered it when I ordered the saw weeks ago and it still hasn't came, it's on back order. So I can't really attest to what it's made like, but I do know that theirs is a board here, a board here, and one board here. It's all like wooden MDF and then um, there's no ruler or anything like that. So that's just a plain simple one and theirs is closer to this size. This one I used um, some regular basswood, glued it together by pieces and put it together. Then I cut the hole out for that and then I glued these little boards on here. Now with this one, what you have to do is you have to line it up on your right and left side okay do not use your fingers because you will end up chopping them off and that wouldn't be good you are going to turn your saw on and then you want to hold this down because you don't know where the saw is exactly I mean you know it's like within this vicinity you know but you don't know exactly where it is so you want to hold something on there not your hand okay and then you want to raise the saw blade up gently. That noise means you're starting to hit the bottom. I'm slowly turning my saw blade to come up through the wood. Do it very slow. Okay, now if you can see, I'll turn it off for a second. If you can see, the blade is starting to come up. Now, I was anticipating the blade was going to come up somewhere around here, but with this here, and I moved it back again, I lost my position that quick. So I'm glad I'm using the stick because if I had been over here with my hand or here with my hand, and this blade came up all the way, it's going to cover about here to here but it's starting, you know, to come up in that area. Now I'm gonna lower it back down for a second so I can come back up. your thumbs over here and here and you want to slightly glide keeping pressure going downward
Okay, normally I would have the vacuum hooked up so I don't have all this dust. But the vacuum would just make too much noise for you guys to hear it. Now, I don't need the blade up this thick for what I need to cut. So, I'm going to lower it. And then I'm going to do a little test piece so you can see. So, here's my little pieces of wood that I've got that's like paint stirring sticks and whatever, you know. Actually, I'll just use this one since it's already there. Okay, now, I will say you need to clean this off. And then, after I went through, as soon as I seen this, I knew my blade was there, so I stopped. Now, with the other one I made, I went ahead and took it all the way through. Okay. And you could just kind of go all the way through with the other one too. But I put those extra two pieces of boards on mine because, I don't know, it just kind of makes me nervous with that blade. I mean, like, I don't know, maybe it's my father all those years drilling it into my head about how safe I need to be around a saw because it can take your finger off like pretty instantly. Now, this paintbrush, everybody should have one if you're working with tools, that is not used for anything but dusting because it's amazing. It just really helps you out with that dust. It lets you sweep it all out of the area that you're in. Now, what you're gonna have to probably do is for the first time, if your board has any like splinters in it or anything from the first cut, you don't need to sand it a lot. You just need to go like one or two passes just to get that off of there. And if you have any in here where you can't get it with your sanding block, just go ahead and take a little piece by itself and do it or a nail file. Okay, so here is the thing that I like about the table sleds. I'm going to try and get to where you can see the wood. I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not, but I will try. But I like the table sled because what it does is it allows you to keep your fingers away from there. So when I go through with this, I'm less likely to get my finger caught up in there because they're outside of the area. Not saying it's not possible, but it's less likely. Okay, and then they sell fences and they sell these little feather boards and stuff like that that you can use for you know the saw that slides in these tracks and then you can just kind of use that as well and the other one holds it down we'll talk about that in another video but it still has your hands very close and again having my hands close to the table saws make me nervous i don't mind using the rotary arm saw but table saws make me nervous the miter saw, the band saw, all those are fine, but I guess it's just, just that exposed blade. And again, you know, you can use the guard that comes with it, you know, and it'll keep the wood from kicking back a little bit. But a lot of times the wood doesn't want to go through there with that on there, so people take them off, which is a big mistake. And um, using this sled kind of helps me feel better about not using that. So you do what you think is safe and, you know, what you should do. But um, I also plan on, which I don't have today, it'll be in a part two video, I'll do it. I'll have to go to the hardware store and find some. But I plan on putting a plexiglass shield going down the middle of this. But because I made this bigger, I don't have plexiglass large enough. But that way, when I'm holding it over here, this is also blocked and my hands aren't going to get caught up in there like they would possibly do if I was to be like, oh, let me grab that real quick because it's going to stop me from grabbing it. All right, so now let me show you this real quick and then um, that'll be it for this tutorial. straight. All right, I'm going to do it again. Only this time I'm going to cut the blue off. Okay, 
Okay, so that wants to hang up because it's got material on it. So I'm going to use this to keep that from happening. Did you see how because this material was on here and this wasn't laying flat, the saw wanted to keep kind of making this go like that and it was having a hard time cutting through it and it wanted to bounce back? That's something you need to pay attention to when you're cutting wood because if you got a really warped piece of wood and it's twisting up this way on one side and twisting down that way on the other side, when you go to put it through that blade, it's going to kick back at you. And when it kicks back at you, you could potentially get your finger caught up in that blade. And as that blade may not seem very big, it could take your finger off. I mean, it really could. So use um, a lot of caution when you're doing table saws and, you know, just be smart about what you're doing and aware of where you're putting your hands. Okay. Again, paintbrush for dusting. It works great. All right. And I always put my blade back down when I'm done. And then for a safety feature, I have this plugged into an outlet that's hidden because I don't want anybody to come in here and mess with my stuff, mainly the teenager. Um, so I end up, you know, finding the outlet and then I have to turn it on and then go from there. And then it's a little inconvenience, but it makes me feel better. All right, so when you have your saws, again, you know, just be careful about what you're doing. Be aware, and hopefully um, this tutorial was helpful. It does, with it being a little bit bigger, it does kind of want to weigh a little bit more than that one did. But I think that's just because, you know, of how it is. But it works perfect. I mean, I lined it up here. It's doing what it needs to do. It's gliding really easily. Not having any issues, you know, with that. I did come through a little bit on here because I didn't stop quite as soon. But that's okay. I mean, that's perfectly fine. But the next tutorial that I'll do um, will be posted on my YouTube channel. So like and subscribe if you want to see it. I'll put a piece of plexiglass across here. And then I'm going to do some angles. So all I have to do is take a piece of wood and put it on here with the angle. And then when it goes through the blade like this, it's going to cut off a 45. So that'll be something I'll do as well. And then if you want to cut something that is a thin piece of wood that's just very, very narrow, kind of like this, you can always clamp something like that to the wood to where you don't even have to have your fingers on it. You can just clamp it on one side or both sides or however long it is. And if you want to take and do um, the same exact slice every single time, I can tell you a trick that my dad told me. Okay, so you get yourself a stopping block. That's what he called it. And you would clamp this to this. Now, I have to set it down to do it because I don't have five hands. But you would clamp that to that, okay? And again, be careful when you're holding it because now you've got something in your way. But every single time you take this through, that saw, it's going to slice it. And then you're going to have this piece. Then you take it and you move it down and you put the next one in there. And then you've got that piece. And then again and again. And then you can have 100 pieces the same exact size as long as you don't move this block. And as long as you keep pushing that up against there. That's just a little build tip. And um, again, just a quick overview. And then, you know, so you have it. MDF is what I use for the bottom of this one. This is bass wood. It's one eighth inch. This is just regular old lumber that's like a one by two, I believe, or one by one. No, I think it's like a one by one because they're not really measured as they say they are. But um, I, it was like, I don't know, relatively reasonable. You can buy it in oak if you want, but you're going to pay a lot of money. If you buy it in the regular lumber 
part, you're going to have some warp boards. You're going to have some that has like little splintery type things in it. But if you're okay with sanding it down, I mean, you can see I sanded all that paint off and this looks pretty good. I mean, I'll have to sand where I went through again, but it looks pretty good for, you know, a reasonable board. So it's definitely usable. And then um, I just stripped down the bass board. It was a two inch piece of bass board. I stripped it into the thickness of these holes, you know, or these miter, I guess they're miter slots, you know, for that. And then slice through it with the blade. Now, I also have a zero clearance piece of plastic on here. It comes with a metal piece. I don't use the metal piece. It has too big of a gap in it. Um, all my little stuff falls through or it gets caught up in it. And I don't like that. So I like having the zero clearance. When you buy the saw, if you decide you want this saw, it's on um, Micromark's website. They have a couple um, types of it. This one was the more expensive one than the smaller one. And you can tell because the one has an output on the side and the other one has an output on the back for the vacuum. But um, this piece here is definitely a little bit extra and it's worth it. So that's if I had to buy something and say, okay, I need to have something, that would be the piece I would get. All right, and I would also buy the additional fence as well. But we'll go over this saw in depth in a different video because it's not really anything that we need to do today. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and hopefully you can make your own table saw sled. And if you can't and you don't have the ability to, I will probably put a couple of these on my Etsy shop and I'll put the link below when I do that. And then you can also follow on my Facebook page and on my website and I'll share with you if I decide.